The Pajero Sport, which shares its engine, transmission and much of its platform with the Triton Ute, has been engineered from the outset to be capable off-road. Its ground clearance, approach and departure angles and tire choice are all intended to enable it to tackle terrain too gnarly for most unibody SUVs. Obviously, this compromises on-road performance. This third-gen Pajero Sport was first launched in 2015, and while it's been updated, most recently in 2020, we want to know if it still stacks up when driving the rear rubber only. Or does losing the four-wheel drive system simply miss the point? The seven-seater Pajero Sport GLS 4x2 on test here retails for $48,690 before on-road costs, which represents a saving of $5,000 over the four-wheel drive equivalent, the GLS 4x4 dot in GLS spec as tested here, the Pajero Sport includes automatic wipers, dual-zone climate control, integrated satellite navigation, DAP plus digital radio, a power tailgate, leather steering wheel, electric parking brake, rear privacy glass, auto-dimming rearview mirror, keyless entry with push-button start, auto-folding mirrors, 18-inch wheels, a 220 volts power outlet in the middle row and LED front fog lights. White is the only no-cost color, all other colors at $740 with the exception of white diamond, which is a $940 option. For more premium upholstery, a digital instrument display, electrically adjustable heated front seats and a more comprehensive safety suite, which we'll get to, among other gear, you need to step up to the Pajero Sport exceed at $59,190 before on-road costs, but it's not offered as a rear driver. Things we like, value pricing, conditional 10-year warranty, affordable service schedule. Not so much, dull steering, engine noise, excessive body lean through corners. Equipment list, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, DAP plus digital radio, six-speaker sound system, adaptive cruise control, keyless entry and start, leather-wrapped steering wheel and gear selector, LED headlights, fog lights and daytime running lights, dual-zone climate control, power-folding exterior mirrors, four-speaker sound system, automatic headlights, rain-sensing wipers, rear privacy glass, power tailgate, electronic parking brake, seven seats. If you feel that the interiors of current cars have become too screen-heavy and bafflingly complex, where an algebraic equation is easier than adjusting the air vents, chances are you'll find the cabin of the Pajero Sport a welcome, uncomplicated respite. There will be no requirement for a 15-year-old to walk you through the operation of anything in here. The center console presents a clean, uncluttered layout with simple ventilation controls and an 8.0-inch multimedia screen controlled by straightforward icons in a logical menu structure. It's not especially bright or high resolution, nor is it as swift to respond to the touch as some rivals, and the graphics look dated. But at least it doesn't bury commonly used functions under multiple submenus. There's inbuilt navigation as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto via cable connection. Our main gripe is the lack of a volume knob for the average but acceptable six-speaker audio. There are knobs provided below for the climate control so it's clear the interior design team wasn't totally allergic to anything that's not a touch panel. So why relegate the most commonly used function to the most fiddly control possible? Granted, the driver has the convenience of a volume rocker switch on the steering wheel so it's more likely to be an inconvenience to the passenger, but it's a case of dumb design where elsewhere there seems to be an emphasis on logic and simplicity. We also found the lack of a mute control either on the wheel or the fascia an annoyance, while the voice command button on the steering wheel has zero understanding of anything it's asked. Lack of a digital speedo is also a demerit, although thankfully the analog dials are crisply legible and sensibly graduated. Hard plastics are used throughout the cabin, though the use of faux leather trim on areas like the center console does up perceived material quality slightly. Both front seats are manually adjusted, with the drivers providing only adjustment for the base angle, not overall seat height. The driver also gets electric lumbar support. Overall bolstering is okay, 
the seat doesn't attempt to grip you too tightly because there's probably no real need to. The only shortcoming from my point of view in accommodating my 182cm frame is that the seat base is a bit short to provide optimum under thigh support. The pedal box, too, is a little more snug than some competitors so longer limbed drivers may find their legs splayed out to the center console and door trim. Interior storage space for an SUV in this segment ranks only as adequate. The center console bin is modestly sized and access into it is blocked by a removable top tray. There is, however, storage on a shelf tucked underneath the center console. Door bins are a useful size and accommodate 1 liter drink bottles. There's also a sunglasses compartment in the ceiling but overall, no real surprise nor delight in terms of thoughtful touches or thinking outside of a very conservative box. Life in the second row is fine for kids, but tall adults may find the seat bases set a little low, requiring more bending of the legs than most people would prefer. There are two USB sockets, a 220 volt outlet and air vents. The rear door bins accommodate a standard drink bottle and there are pop-out cup holders when the center armrest is folded down. No problems with headroom as you'd expect in an SUV with a conventional roof line like this. Access into the third row is reasonable on both sides of the car thanks to the folding and flipping mechanism of the 60-40 split rear seat. But what about the all-important folding of the third row when you want to use that space for cargo? Pulling on straps unlatches the sprung third row bases, while another pair of straps allow the backrests to fold flat. The re-erecting process, however, is not quite as seamless. With the third row folded, this bumps up to 502 liters, while folding the second row liberates 1488 liters. The Pajero Sport has a 5-star ANCAP rating from 2015, and yes, it gets the basics right, but there are some omissions that you will find on competitors in this price bracket. What is included are 7 airbags, autonomous emergency braking, AB, adaptive cruise control, a reversing camera, and rear parking sensors. But no front parking sensors, which seems mean in the extreme, no blind spot monitoring, no lane departure warning, lane keep assist, or rear cross traffic alert. For these, you need to step up to the exceed grade. First inescapable fact of life behind the wheel of Pajero Sport, the 2.4-liter diesel engine insists on being a vocal contributor to the driving soundtrack. This is not a quiet unit. Nor is it especially smooth, imparting a light layer of vibration through the steering wheel at idle, as it does in the Triton. It is sufficiently responsive to the throttle in the step-off phase, helped in part by sensibly short first and second ratios of the 8-speed automatic transmission, which shuffles up the gears quickly and smoothly. Urban performance then is perfectly adequate even if acceleration numbers show the Pajero Sport is around a second slower to 100 km per hour from a standing start than a couple of its swifter segment competitors. Yes, this is of questionable relevance to the target audience but it is indicative of the fact that the 133 kW engine does need to be worked harder with a full complement of passengers on board in hilly terrain on the open road. There are no paddle shifters to allow the driver to take manual control of the transmission, and granted most won't miss this emission. If you really insist on overriding the 8-speed auto you can move the selector over into the manual gate, though its shift pattern is the reverse of what is largely accepted as the preferred layout. It will hold a selected ratio against the engine's limiter, although quite why you'd want to is another question altogether. Above 4000 revolutions per minute, the engine is making a very vocal protestation that it's not thrilled to be working in that zone. Like most diesels, it's happiest in the band from just off idle to around 3500 revolutions per minute, with peak torque, 430 newton meters produced at 2500 revolutions per minute as for motorway cruising at 110 kilometers per hour in eighth gear the engine is turning over at 1900 revolutions per minute so still audible but with the addition of light wind and tire noise it's no longer the dominant soundtrack 
The steering is slightly lifeless just either side of center, which is not ideal in around town driving but does make the Pajero Sport feel less nervous and more planted at touring speeds. It's not light, but the weighting remains consistent across the full span of 3.6 turns lock to lock. So not a fast rack by SUV standards, but at least it does have a reassuring self-centering action as you straighten up out of roundabouts or intersections, avoiding that leaden, manual unwinding of the wheel required by some competitors in the segment. Under the Pajero Sport's back end, the live axle is located by a three-link system with coil springs and a panha rod in lieu of the leaf springs under the Triton on which it's based. This does benefit ride comfort, but again, it's important to make the distinction between the ride comfort of a 4x4, sorry, 4x2, on a separate chassis and not be lulled into comparisons with unibody SUVs, that have neither the ground clearance nor the towing capability of the Pajero Sport. If you can avoid slimy 10% gradients and deep soft sand, you may actually find that the Pajero Sport copes pretty admirably without four-wheel drive. If you plan on using the GLS 4x2 as a load hauler, its listed maximum tow ball load is 300 kg, 10 kg less than the 4x4 version, and its towing capacity is 750 kg, unbraked, or 3000 kg braked, which is 100 kg less than the 4x4 version of the Pajero Sport. So the Pajero Sport's max towing capacity is excellent. For the Pajero Sport towing its max 3000 kg, vehicle payload is over 100 kg greater at 420 kg. Regardless, it's clear why Pajero Sport remains a popular choice for heavy hauling when comparing it to a unibody SUV. As we said from the outset, that's something that can only be addressed on an individual user basis. If you need a robust seven-seater with generous ground clearance and hefty brake towing ability, put it on the shortlist that includes the Everest and MUX, and, for value and equipment, a Songyong Rexton.